Welcome, I'm Catherine Paquet, and we will talk in this recording about the ESA system administration. So what we're seeing now is actually a slide of the different menus you will have with the ESA in the GUI environment. You will notice actually five different specific topics. Let's start looking at those topics starting from the left. The most left menu that you have is called monitor. That is where you're going to go to get your uh, monitoring the device, getting your reports, uh, tracking messages, and also as an administrator to look at your quarantines. The next two topic are mail policies and security services, and they go hand in hand. With, let's start with the middle one, security services. With security services, that's where you're going to go and start the big feature. Go and enable a feature. So let's say um, antivirus. You would go under security services, under antivirus, and from there you would enable Sophos and or McAfee. What about the mail policy menu? Well, in the man of mail policy menu is where you will go and fine tune those features that you would have enabled under security services. So let's take again the example of you went under security services, under antivirus, and you enabled uh, Sophos. Now you're going to come back into the mail policy menu under incoming mail, and you will adjust actually what you're doing with so false antivirus, or it could be um, anti-spam would be a, even a better example. Under security service, you enable anti-spam. When you come back to incoming mail, maybe you have different spam policy if someone is from mark, if an email arrived for someone in marketing versus someone an email arriving for your R and D department. Maybe for marketing, you want them to get. Every single piece of email, whether it's gray mail, whether it's market, uh, uh, marketing mail is gray mail, or whether it's spam, your marketing people want to get the email. Where with the research department, well, you will make a rule that, well, anti-spam, we will actually drop positive spam for our R&D department. So under mail policy, that's where you're going to go and fine tune actually those rules. What are the two last menus we have on the most right? We will have the network menu. That's where you're going to go and um, ter give IP addresses to your interface, uh, set up your DNS server, set up routing. And on the most right, this is the system administration. You're going to go and um, use the um, trace tool, which is to simulate sending an email. More on that coming up. We will also use our system administrator administration menu for log services, feature keys, upgrade, etc. So, talking about the system administration menu, uh, that's where we're going to go and start start and stop some services processes. We can also go and manage our users. About users. So the term users that is being used in the menu, they, they actually mean your administrator. Okay? So if you want to go and see who can administer your ESA, that is under user. System setup. So if we wish maybe to run the uh, wizard again on that box. And finally, what's a software version if we need to upgrade and the license key that we have. What about adding users? Again, we now know that the term users is not really users, it's more the administrator of the box. There are actually, when you go under system administration, under user, there are actually multiple roles that already exist. So here we have one administration administrator. We would like to add actually one more administrator. And you can go and actually create your own um, either you can use can role that already exists or you could create your own role. So the role that already exists such as uh, administrator, well that's the almighty of the box, can do anything it wants inside the box. Or you would have the read owner operator, that's someone who can read but as actually uh, writing and creating new administrator, you would not have that capability. 
And you could go if you want and, re and create your own user role. So you could maybe and create a new user role that you would call uh, data loss prevention. So I want to create actually something that I will call data loss prevention HR. <coughs> Later on, we will teach you that uh, you can ask your ESA if it sees that there's a data loss violation to send a copy of that email to HR department for review, as an example. Well, maybe you want the person from HR to uh, have some, uh, for DLP, you would like a person in HR to be able to log inside the ESA to do some DLP adjustment. So we say, yeah, we would like actually, when it's the topic of DLP, if your role belongs to the DLP HR, you have the role, you have the right to adjust the DLP policies. On the system administration menu, this is also where you can keep a backup, make a backup of your ESA configuration file. The ESA configuration file is in XML format. Now, tip of the trade here is you'll see one of the topic here, one of the radio button is actually by default when you are saving a copy of your configuration file, it will save it mask. Now the problem when you have a mask pass rate is that that passcode, that password has been hashed. And if you try to do a RME, install a new box and copy the previous ESA's configuration in that new box, you will have a problem because the hash, which is a salted hash, will not be able to be understood. So the passcode actually will not be in clear text, will be hashed. And even though you type in the right password, the hash that was stored when you copied the, the file is not, uh, it does not match with the new hash process. So tip of the trail, trade, always, always use plain phrases. So actually use plain phrases when you are saving your configuration file if you wish to be able to reuse that configuration file on the next box that you're going to be replacing it with. When it's time to update, upgrade your box and update your box, uh, the box will go and actually talk directly to Cisco uh, 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 update server to get the latest updates. Um, by the way, another tip here, you can subscribe actually to receive email notification from Cisco when the new operating system or the new update actually comes out for your ESA box. But what about if in your organization, actually, uh, you cannot have, you don't give permission of your ESA to go talk directly to the internet. In this case, you can actually stage locally uh, inside your network, go and download your update and have your ESA stage locally their update. Network configuration menu. So the second menu from the left is about network configuration. One important topic under network configuration is actually your interface card. So with the, with the ESA, we have a concept of a layer two, layer three, and layer four OSI model here. So layer two, this is actually your port. Layer three, that will be what we call an IP interface. And layer four is a listener. Coming up, we'll have a lecture right on the, just on the listener. So if you go at the CLI of this particular box here and you type the command etherconfig, you will see that this particular box has actually three interfaces, three ethernet port. So the three Ethernet ports are data one, data two, and management. On the GUI, you can go and add an IP interface. So for those of us who have a background in routing or firewalling from Cisco, for us, layer two, layer three is together. But not here. With the ESA, really, we have the port, which is layer two. And then we have the IP interface. And the IP interface, we have an example here. I want to create a new IP interface. And the IP interface is responsible of the IP address. So we'll create actually an IP interface that I want to call Inside Corp. 
and that inside corp that will be using which physical port? It will be using physical port data 2. So over here, I have my layer 2 of the OSI model, and my IP address, my layer 3, is listed, and that layer 3, we refer to it as a IP interface. Therefore, when I go back under my network menu, and I look at my interface, I have my inside interface and my public interface, and those are IP interface. What behind those in terms of port? Well, I just configured actually my inside interface. It's using data 2 and I presume that my public facing interface is probably using data 1. I should probably also have maybe a management interface here. So we had at layer 2, we had a port. On that port, we have just installed actually uh, an IP interface. And the IP interface, we called it actually Corp. Um, can't remember how I called it, the previous slide, Inside Corp. So we have actually an IP interface and we called it Inside Corp. Now, I'd like that Inside Corp interface to start listening on its port 25. So to do that, we're going to go under listener, and we're going to add a listener, and my listener will be actually an outbound mail. Hmm. On my ESA, I have my ESA, I have actually, I've just configured data 2, and I called it inside corp, and I also have my data 1 here, and my data 1 faces the internet. So on, this is my exchange server as an example. Well, that data to interface, which is the data to interface, that's a layer two, the port, which has an IP address, is my inside. It's now with, at layer three, it's now called inside corp, and it's got an IP address associated with it. And on top of that is now at layer four, at layer 4, I would like it to start listening on port 25. So to have this guy listening on port 25, we're going to go and turn on a listener. So we're going to go and actually the listener I'm going to be creating if, I'm, if I would like to do my outbound mail. So if that would be really my outbound mail, it would be a private listener, not a public listener. That would be a private listener. It would be using my inside corp and it is listening on port 25. And at the end, I would have actually this. I would have my inbound mail listener listening on port 25, and uh, it should, my inbound mail listening on port 25 is pointing to the public, and that would be using actually data one, and my outbound mail would be using the, so this is my layer four, this is my layer three and my layer two. This one would be using data two over here. Thank you for attending this recording regarding the ESA administration. And more precisely, we saw the different menus that we have in the GUI. And we spent a little bit more time discussing the network menu. And on this topic, actually, more to follow regarding listeners. Thank you.